I goddamn love the Three Kingdoms era. Thanks to the books and video games, it actually steered the course of my life. And despite growing older, bolder, and a thousand times more grumpy, I'm still very much fascinated by anything to do with that era. My most played game on the Nintendo Switch is Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14. So when I saw that Arc System Works were smashing together the River City series with the Three Kingdoms era, I was on board. I didn't even need to see it. And then I saw it. And then hell yes. Before we get into it, if you love the Switch, then hit that subscribe button. And if you really love the Switch, then hit that bell button too. And also check out my brand new channel, A Bit More Jordan, for a lot more me. I give long, humorous retrospectives on classic video games. Alundra is coming this weekend. River City Saga Three Kingdoms is out today on the eShop around the world. It's also available physically in Asian regions, some of which have English. Links are below in the description for that, but I'll give you more in-depth info later on. Kunio Kun is most certainly an underrated video game mascot. Coming to fame in the West during the NES era, they honestly had some of the best games on that system. In fact, I'm one of those jerks who thinks 95% of the NES library is just too retro to play these days, but River City Ransom, Dodgeball, you can easily play those today and have fun. And the former of those is basically what this Three Kingdoms mashup follows. It's River City Ransom with incredible period costumes. While I am familiar with the Kunio Kun universe, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, especially when it comes to the different characters. I'm too cultured for paying attention, I just like to beat stuff up. So yeah, here we have the Kunio Kun characters playing different roles. Kunio himself is Guan Yu, and two of his mates play Liu Bei and Zhang Fei. Some of the humor may be lost on me, but I think more hardcore fans will get kicks out of who shows up to be who. For example, Misako and Kyoko play as Da Chiao and Xiao Chiao. Abobo plays Hua Xiong, second to only Lu Bu in Dong Zhuo's army. And Lu Bu himself, or should I say herself, is played by Mizusu. And yeah, she is terrifying. Seeing all these historical people represented by cool or often dorky Kunium Kun characters is a treat, even if I'm unfamiliar with like half of them. The gameplay is basically River City Ransom, but on a very grand scale. It's a beat-em-up mixed with RPG elements. The story starts at the beginning of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. As you make the brotherly oath, you control Guan Yu as he listens to his big bro to make his mark on Chinese history. You can explore the environments in 3D, and there's a mix of safe towns, and then highways filled with bandits or enemy troops. You can pop in shops, buy some meat buns, or the classic lamb soup, which if it's anything like my experience in China, contains one tiny slice of mutton, and then a bucket full of spicy water. You can buy weapons, you can buy special attacks and items that help you heal. You can even talk with the townsfolk for a bit of humorous side talk. The story follows the beats of the novel pretty well, with some side quests adding flavor to the overall narrative, such as Guan Yu weaving some sandals for a boy, and also making a doghouse for a puppy. What a guy. Doing these will net you money, items, reputation, and experience, which in turn, you can level up your character with. You get a bunch of ability points that you can use on whichever stats you please. Your punching power, your kicking power, endurance, and that ever so vague, annoying, unquantifiable luck value. Seriously, is there any game out there where it's obvious luck actually does something? You'll need to upgrade these for the fighting, which is what you'll be spending most of your time doing in this game. You have a punch, kick, grab, and a jump button. You can assign different moves to each. I was a particular fan of spamming the drop kick to high heaven with boosted kick stats, and man, oh, that felt good. There's also a couple of other things you can do. You can go into hot-blooded mode and spam a strong attack, or do an ultimate attack if your gauge is high enough. Tactics is a fun one, which gives you another kind of super attack, so all in all, you've got lots of tools in your arsenal to help beat the living pulp out of the bad guys, and it is very customizable too. For the most part, Guan Yu will be roaming alone, taking down the hordes, which he's very capable of doing. But for some of the bigger battles, you'll be joined by Liu Bei and Zhang Fei. And maybe plenty of other allies too. There's obviously multiplayer, and I did coerce my wife to play with me for about 20 minutes, and we had fun. Although I'll be paying for this later, since I traded her help for a future browse of some new bedsheets. I'll try not to kill myself. You can play with four players in total, which is fun, although traversal can be a bit of a pain if people get too far behind or ahead. Plus, there's some often difficult platforming sections which are fun, but the game isn't exactly equipped for, especially with multiplayer. 
The map is huge. It has most of the key areas where the story takes place. You can traverse this all by yourself, or you can take advantage of the fast travel system. But I say there's nothing like ramping through the Chinese countryside, taking up bandits and leveling up. It's overall really fun. It's your classic gameplay that still works well to this day with some modern twists and additions that make it a bit more snazzy. I'm not known for being a huge fan of beat-em-ups in general, but the RPG elements, the exploration, the humorous story, and Lu Bu wearing lipstick, that made it for me. A nice combo of a punch, a drop kick, picking your foe up off the floor and then lobbing them into a crowd just does not get old. Nor does throwing a sword halfway across the screen and plowing it through half a dozen bandits. It's just fun. It is repetitive like any game of this genre, but there's so much going on in between battles, a story, the walking from point A to point B, the RPG stuff, it's just not tiresome. I think the big issue is that it just doesn't cover the whole period. It only goes up to Red Cliffs, which is like halfway through the story. It feels like we only have half a product at times, even if there is enough content. I mean, they are pretty thorough with each of the chapters, but I don't like an incomplete story. I might not sleep at night if I don't find out what happens. Although I guess it would be slightly awkward if the main character of the game gets executed 60% way through the narrative, and then pretty much everyone else gets killed, assassinated, dies of old age, which wouldn't be the most wholesome of games, but perhaps there's room for a volume 2 where the game switches over to the children of the three main characters, where two of them do decently while the other one chubbily sits on his dad's throne. Actually, that would be a nice dynamic. Two heroes dragging an overweight coward on a journey with them. That could work. Aside from the main mode, there's also a bonus mode called China Heroes, which is more like your standard linear beat-em-up. Everything is very pared back and there's loads of characters to choose from, although you do have to unlock some of them. There's no super duper special attacks, there's no leveling up, each character has a limited move pool, although they are very different from each other and they take a lot of getting used to. Don't worry, you can turn the scan lines off, I just kept them on to differentiate the different modes for you guys, because yeah, they burn your eyes to oblivion. Once again, this is available to play multiplayer either on couch co-op or online. It's obviously not as interesting as the main mode, and I don't think I'd particularly enjoy it if it was a product sold by itself, but as a bonus mode, it is nice to have. I just wish the foes didn't freak out every so often and then wander off screen. We've got a goddamn timer, mate. No rush. Just piss off for a cup of tea and come back. Jesus. As I said, this is available physically on the Nintendo Switch and PS4, but only in Asian regions. There is a Japanese physical which you do not want since it does not have English according to the Japanese eShop. But there's two Asian versions that do have English. There's a Hong Kong version which has a Chinese cover, and a Southeast Asian version which has an English cover. And of course, both have English on the cartridge. There's no Western physical version announced at the time of this video. It may happen, but nothing's announced. If you want to own a physical copy, import the game, keep it forever, then check the links in the description and the pinned comment. Those are the versions you want. And if you buy it, you help support Switch Watch at the same time. Plus, in return for clicking our links, you can also get a sweet 5% of any physical item from PlayAsia with our current coupon code STEENBOK. That will run out in October-ish, so if you're watching this in the future, check out the latest Let's Get Physical video series, which will keep you up to date with our codes. And remember, it's free shipping over 100 bucks. If you want it digitally, it is 30 bucks in the US and 25 quid in the UK. If you need some eShop credit, head over to switchwatch.net for some fine eShop credit. And I do think it's worth it. The production value is rather nice. The sprites really pop off the screen and the character artwork is just good. The 3D environments do their job, although the perspective can be a bit of an issue, especially when it comes to jumping and platforming. The music is really excellent. It's catchy and infectious and I found myself constantly tapping away at the tunes while lobbing bandits into rivers. There's even a nice music player in the game for you to enjoy the music with. Overall, I think River City Saga Three Kingdoms is a really fine beat-em-up, a lovely return of Kunio Kun and specifically the RPG-style adventures you may have enjoyed from your childhood, but now enhanced with lots of extra moves and customization. I'm a big fan of the Three Kingdoms era, so obviously I am biased, but they did a great job of making it a fun, humor-filled adventure. It's a shame they're not using the whole period, but I get why, and it is long enough as is. Each chapter is a few hours long, so you're not begging for more content. Good production value, decent enough price, a nice 8 out of 10. 
Thanks for watching. If you want to pick this up physically, then consider using the links below in the description to support us at the same time. If you want some eShop credit, check out switchwatch.net. Be sure to subscribe for more Switch goodness. Every Monday, I take you through the physical releases on the Nintendo Switch. And check out my new channel, A Bit More Jordan, where I take you through in-depth analysis of your favorite retro classics. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boom Box, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J Cross 776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Issa V, Mental Traveler, Grant Cert, Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, and Katacha. Thank you for your support. Plus you, yeah, you watching right now, if you watched all the way through, then leave me a comment telling me your favorite beat-em-up of all time. I would love to know.